Truma, makers of the combi heater and iNet system, are proud to sponsor Practical Motorhome TV. Welcome to Practical Motorhome TV, the only place you need to be if motor caravanning is your thing. Coming up, Diamond Dave's got tyres and turbos and we pitch up at Oxenhall Touring Park. Now just like any large self-respecting motorhome manufacturer, Swift Group very much likes to keep things in the family. So it's only fair that if it's introduced some improvements right at the top of the portfolio into the iconic Contiki, then these should percolate downwards. And they certainly did with the black edition for the Bolero. So wouldn't it be good if Rio, the compact coach built range in the middle of the portfolio had the same treatment? Exactly, Swift's management have been listening to your concerns and that's what they're doing moving forward for the 2017 season unveiling Rio Black Edition, which also has the brand new Euro 6 engine on the Fiat Ducato. Now Rio's USP is that it's scarcely wider than the cab on which it's based, and this 340 model at 6.4 metres long is a true compact coach built. Now with this kind of form factor, the Rio is not unlike a panel van conversion, and in fact this range has been stealing sales of panel van conversions, just shows you how successful an idea it has become. Now, a panel van conversion can obviously give you a rear lounge with some barn doors which you can open and enjoy the great outdoors. You can also do the same in this kind of vehicle thanks to this amazing rear tailgate. And it works very simply as you'd expect. Just pull up here. It lifts on gas struts to reveal the back end of the vehicle and a very sociable lounge that you can take outdoors or you can bring the outdoors indoors depending on your point of view. Now the tailgate also acts as a canopy during the day, so keep the sun off you if it's a little bit too hot for example, while in the evenings when things get a bit cooler there are some lights in here so you could use it almost like an awning. Another great thing Swift has done is to put an electric step at the back of the vehicle which makes entrance and egress very easy indeed. The Rio 340 is a four berth with four belted travel seats. It isn't a new model, but it does go into the new season with some refinements and improvements. One of those is a brand new soft furnishing scheme called Cordone. It has a textured edging and a faux suede infill, which is called Swift Shield. You'll also notice that there's a honeycomb surround for the windows and blinds instead of curtains, a very modern and contemporary look. And up above, plenty of natural light floods in through that massive skylight, which also opens to allow plenty of ventilation in those warmer summer months. All 2017 Rio models go forward with Fiat's latest Euro 6 engines, which as we all know use exhaust gas recirculation rather than diesel exhaust fluid to meet the stringent new Euro 6 emission standard. Now obviously these cabs are fairly routine in that they offer a 6-speed manual gearbox, 2.3-litre engine producing 130 bhp. All very good so far. You'll also notice on the dashboard we have our old friend the tablet holder, which allows you to put a tablet in the dash, horizontally mounted for some superior sat nabbing, and you can also open the sunroof to take advantage of our fantastic summer weather. A couple of other points in the habitation area include the rather sturdy door with its amazing grab handle and up above that Swift's command control panel which puts all the services in one very easy to use place. And bear in mind you can download an app for your smartphone or tablet and control everything from the comfort of your seat wherever that seems to be, in the front, in the dinette or even at the back. Now this van is 6.4 metres long, but its kitchen would shame that of many other larger motorhomes. There's an absolutely enormous expanse of work surface, and the equipment is more than up to the task too. Consider this new cooker, dual fuel unit, separate oven and grill, engineered to be more efficient, and also to make far less noise when on the road. You get a circular sink, smart monoblock tap, storage solutions up above and below, a microwave oven and a dual fuel fridge with a decent capacity for the couple on tour. What's not to like about that? Now the offside multifunction washroom is exactly that. Check out the way that the mixer tap actually provides the shower head. 
but then again you're not going to be spending a huge amount of time in here if you're staying on full facility sites. If you do however you have a swivel loo, a shower tray, a deep sink and a storage unit on the side wall. Now just like the washroom the end lounge is another multi-function space in this van and in addition to all its talents in the sociable and relaxing environments it's also a bedroom. We'll get on to that in a minute but first let's talk about these triple aspect windows which flood the area with light and also some multimedia options. There's a pair of speakers here in the back and behind me on top of the wardrobe a place for your flat screen TV. Now talking about these sleeping berths there's a double down here which is made just by extending the seat bases under where I'm sitting and rearranging the cushions. Up above is the pièce de résistance, a fixed bed in drop down form with a Duvalet Duvalite memory foam mattress for maximum comfort. Now Swift is basically rolling back on the electrically operated drop down beds in favour of manual ones. It's very easy to use, you don't really need to exercise that much brute force. If there's one thing to note about this rear space is that there isn't very much standing room. I can't stand up and I'm almost six foot so you have to kind of dip a little bit to get in and out of this area but you could also go through the back tailgate. The Swift Rio Black Edition 340 has an MTPLM of three and a half thousand kilograms so anyone can drive it on a standard car license. For my money this is the most fully formed model in the Rio range. It's truly multi-function and it's 6.4 meters long it's really versatile too. You could have it as your second car, in fact, a daily drive. Swift's Black Edition enhancements have made an interesting van even more desirable. There is very little wrong with last year's one, and the one going into 2017 is even further enhanced and improved, and you also get that Euro 6 engine. So what's not to like about that? Located in Bicton Heath near Shrewsbury, Oxon Hall Touring Park's 112 touring pitches are open all year round and all comers are welcomed by its friendly staff. But those over the age of 18 who desire a little peace and quiet can get away from it all in a dedicated adults only section. Caravan Club members can enjoy a discount on their stay here too. The family area caters for kids and you'll find a play area that will help keep them occupied. Other facilities at the park include a laundrette, heated washrooms and extra large pitches. Plus there's Wi-Fi along with a shop and disabled facilities. Shrewsbury is one local attraction that you won't want to miss. The fantastic museums at Ironbridge Gorge will give you a real insight into the region's fascinating industrial history and you can even make use of the nearby park and ride to get into town. Okay well welcome to Oxen Hall Touring Park. We're situated approximately a mile and a half out of Shrewsbury Town Centre. Uh, a very well serviced park. We have a park and ride system right at the entrance with buses running every 20 minutes into Shrewsbury. We've got 125 touring pitches uh, broken down into grass, hard standings and super pitches. Super pitches are all connected to mains, water, drainage, television and obviously the electricity. On top of that we have 60 static homes which are all privately owned. We've got many facilities on this site, all absolutely superb, starting with shower block. We have a laundrette, two washing machines, two dryers, reasonably priced, a shop with caravan accessories. Um, we limit the amount of food we sell. On a wet day, if it's raining, you want to get out of the rain, still plenty to do in Shrewsbury. Obviously, we've got the typical things, the cinema, bowling, swimming, you name it, I think we've got about as much as anybody else has. Obviously we've got the two indoor shopping malls as well, keeps everybody else happy. Further afield, we've got a lot of indoor play areas for children, um, a lot of farms, they can go and see the animals, the rest of it. We've also got Ironbridge just down the road, which is an exceptionally popular venue to go to. Uh, Bliss Hill is a Victorian village. If I was to offer you some tips for this site, it certainly would be book early. It's a very popular site. If you can't get through on the phone, we have got an online booking system. It's quick and simple to do, but please make sure you get the right categories.
We come to the campsite, this is our third time this year. We're back in November. We come here because the staff are so wonderful and so helpful and it's very, very clean and we thoroughly enjoy coming. And we'll be back again in November for the turning of the Christmas lights. We're, we're here now to go to the Shrewsbury Flower Show. We come every year for that with our friends and we go to Whitchurch, we go around all the different little villages, Ludlow, and it's, we just thoroughly enjoy it. Well, this is our 15th night here, having been many a times. We find it attractive, nice location, fantastic shower block, lovely staff, and ease of travelling to the main town, because there's a park and ride down the road, Chinese takeaway and a supermarket. So, all in all, this is very nice. It's looked after, it's clean, and it's very handy. And we're made welcome. We are. Every it's... time we come, we're made so welcome. There, they remember who we are, yep. which is very nice. We'll get the park and ride just down the road there into the town centre, Shrewsbury. Which we go to a coffee shop there and have a coffee and something to eat and then wander around the shops. We've also been out to other places in the motorhome. We took it out to Ludlow to have a look at the Morris site there. This is a Morris site. Mm. So we get out and about as well. important part of a vehicle. They are the only part of the vehicle that should be in contact with the road after all. Tyre pressure is very important. How do you know what tyre pressures they should be for a motorhome? It's not that difficult. All you need is a quick visit to a weighbridge, weigh your two axles, or three if you've got a tandem axle vehicle, and then contact your tyre manufacturer, tell them the size of the tyre and the model of the tyre and the axle weight and they will tell you what the correct pressure should be. Very often, they will give you a maximum pressure to run for the rear tyres. That's not a problem, other than it may make the ride a bit harsh. Obviously, you'll check your tyre pressures regularly. Weekly, hopefully. Monthly, at least. So when you're looking at your tyres, you're looking for cuts, damage, sidewalls, but you're also looking for cracking. An LED torch is a great way of seeing any little cracks or crazing or even some small cuts that you might otherwise miss. If you shine it at an angle across the surface of the tyre, it will show up anything. And they're only a couple of quid. Check the tread depth, make sure you've got plenty of tread depth there. And check your tyre dates. A lot of people don't realise, but every tyre that's sold in the UK carries its date of manufacture. In this case, 1714. So what does that mean? Well, that's week 17 of 2014. Tyres degrade with age, so it's generally recommended a maximum life of six years. So these are, this tyre is about two years old now, so I've got another four years life of this. It'll probably be, die of old age before it wears out. The other thing is tread depth. We need to check the tread depth. We do that with a tool like this. In this case, we've got 9.3 millimetres of tread. That's all good. The legal minimum is 1.6 millimetres. Personally, I wouldn't run tyres below 3 millimetres. The tread is the bit that gets rid of water when it's raining. The deeper the tread, the more water it can move. So that's your tyres. Again, the most important part of the vehicle, really. Don't forget to check your tyre pressures regularly. Weekly is ideal. Monthly, at the very least. Certainly before every long journey. Keep an eye on your tread depth. Check the sidewalls for damage. Above all, stay safe.
Stepless Globe Bus Range was originally designed to be a narrow van to make it easier for you to drive around those narrow city streets and tricky mountain passes. It's not much use on a big car park like we have here, but it should still be a great van to take on the road. The difference about the Globe Buses this year is that they are 4 centimetres wider and 8 centimetres higher, so perhaps not quite the dinky van they once were. However, what's exciting about the one we're in now is that it's GT spec. Let's take a look outside to see what that really means. GT, as you might guess, means all sportiness. That means we get alloy wheels, racy decals, and perhaps most importantly of all, the red skid plate round the front. The cab can also come in a variety of different colours. This one's black, obviously. It's not quite being a van conversion yet. We still are a coach-built motorhome, but it's getting that little more racy edge. Let's take a look inside. Having eight centimetres of extra height is obviously great for somebody as tall as me, but there are other things about this new interior which I think are worth a look. To begin with, the four centimetres of extra width means that we now have a table which is easily movable, so you can all get in easily around, around to have a good meal. There's not a huge amount of workspace in the kitchen, but one thing Detlef have done this year is to include this rather ingenious extra flap that doesn't get in the way of the door, somebody can still easily get through there which means you have enough space to do a little bit of preparation before cooking things on the three burner hob. There may not be much workspace, but you still get a set for duplex oven, a good sized sink, and there's plenty of storage. Just passing to admire the 142 litre AES fridge, I would say that when you get back here, you do begin to notice the narrowness of this van because my producer and I can't both get back here to show you this, but I would say the closed storage back here is fantastic because not only do you get a wardrobe here, you get another wardrobe under here, plus even more closed storage under here. And although again, because you can't see it because it's behind me, there is a boot locker underneath the bed. You do get two single beds, but with the pull of a simple panel, it can become a double. And what's even more unusual for a van this size and this spec is that it comes with a solid partition door where you can close off the world for the night. Good night. For a little bit of extra flexibility, this table and the seats around it convert into a third bed, but it's probably really only for occasional use. The washroom is in keeping with the sporty look of the van with the black surface to the basin surround and the grey panelling at the corner of the shower. You get a nice duck board and a useful hanging rail at the top of the shower too. There are, as far as I can see, two things about the lounge area. One good, one not so good. Let's start with a not so good thing. There is a step from the cab area down into the main kitchen area, which not everybody likes, mainly because it means their feet go dangling. That's obviously not a problem for someone like me. But what I think is magnificent about this area is the amount of light that floods in through both roof lights. It really makes you think that although this is a slightly narrower than usual van, there's still a huge amount of light and a huge amount of area you can use to look at the view around you as you travel on your journeys. Detlers calls this van a globe bus and it's supposed to make you a global traveller. Did you get the pun? Well, I didn't really either. But all in all, for what it's offering, it's a really great effort. If you don't like the twin bed arrangement at the back of this van, Globe Bus offers several options. There's a larger island bed model with a larger L-shaped kitchen, and a smaller model with a transverse bed across the back. The possibilities for your global travelling are endless. Every modern diesel engine has a turbocharger. On this vehicle, it's down the back of the engine down there. The turbocharger's job is to boost engine performance, and it does that by utilising exhaust gases to help it blow air into the intake of the engine. Here we have the main components of a turbocharger. This is the centre shell, and this carries the turbine shaft in bearings like so. That's a complete turbine shaft. This is the exhaust turbine. That sits inside there. The exhaust gas is coming through here from the engine. Spin, blow across that and spin it. That will spin at up to 100,000 RPM revolutions per minute. On the other end of the shaft is the intake impeller. This spins, obviously, because it's on the same shaft, and that sits inside the turbine housing. 
the snail shell it's often referred to as, and that draws air in through this centre hole and blows it out very rapidly against this casing and out through here into the engine. By blowing more air into the engine, we can burn more fuel and therefore we get more power. Now that sounds like it's going to be more costly in fuel, but actually it isn't because we get more power from it, we can run the vehicle in higher gears and it's therefore more efficient and more fuel efficient. Faults that occur with turbos are usually oil related. There's an oil feed goes into here from the engine and that lubricates the bearings. If the oil seals fail, oil can escape into this housing and get blown into the engine and then it will burn oil. So you get high oil consumption. It can also be a bit dangerous because if enough oil blows through into the engine, the engine can actually run on its own engine oil. Even if you've turned the ignition off, the engine will continue to run and the engine will run away until it's run out of oil or it detonates itself to bits. So it's quite important that those seals are intact. If the seal on the other side goes, of course, the oil will go into the exhaust turbine and it will just be burned and you'll get a lot of smoke out of the exhaust. But that's not quite as bad as blowing it into the intake. The bearings can fail. Um, that would give rise to that running out of true. Because that can run up to 100,000 RPM, it needs to be very finely balanced, typically to less than one gram. If it's out of balance, it can damage the bearings. If it runs out of true, the impeller can contact the casing, the exhaust turbine can contact the exhaust casing, and it causes a lot of damage. Bits of debris can go into the engine and just destroy your engine. So it's quite a simple little device, very important piece of equipment. It's got a few issues that just need to be careful of. Regular oil changes will help to prevent failures. If the oil is old and gets dirty, it can cause the oil feed to the turbo to clog up. If that clogs up, it'll run dry, the bearings will fail, and again, you've got a destroyed engine. So regular servicing, Oil and filter changes, I would say annually, whether you're doing the mileage or not. A lot of motorhomes only do a few thousand miles a year, which does seem a bit excessive changing the oil each year, but if it protects your engine, it's got to be worthwhile. So that's what a turbocharger is, that's what it does. I hope you found this interesting, and I'll see you next time. Sadly, that's all we've got time for on this week's show. We'll be back soon with some new van and site reviews, plus technical advice from our expert, Diamond Dave. In the meantime, you can keep in touch with us via our website, Facebook or Twitter. Until next time then, tour safe and take care. Truma, makers of the combi heater and iNet system, are proud to sponsor Practical Motorhome TV.